Do you want to stay more focused on the right goals in your life or even just figure out what the right goals are for you? Do you want clarity? Do you want better work-life balance? Well, you're in the right place. Welcome to Success Through Failure. Welcome to the Success Through Failure podcast, the show that reveals failure as your path to success. You'll listen to intriguing interviews with some of the most successful people on the planet and learn how their failures became a launchpad for success and how yours can too. Here's your host, former Division I All-American wrestler, former Division I head coach, speaker, and personal coach, Jim Harshaw. Welcome to another episode of Success Through Failure. This is your host, Jim Harshaw, and I'm bringing you another solo episode today. And this one came from this idea came from uh, one of my coaching clients. And he said, Jim, I'm just so busy. I need you to help me automate some of my goals and use some of the technology that you use. And I use a lot of technology in my goals and uh, and just sort of throughout my day for productivity. So I thought I'd share uh, a few of the things that work for me. And these may not work for you. So I kind of have a, have a lot of different things. I started writing this down last night uh, before bed um because i wanted to get this thing recorded in the morning and so i just kept like i'd put my phone down and then i'd like oh yeah this thing too and i get and roll over and i turn my phone back on i'd type in a couple more things and i lay it down i kept doing so i kept doing that over and over and over until i finally got a pretty long list of things here so don't get overwhelmed don't think you have to do all these things uh pick three would be my suggestion because there's a ton of different ones in here you may do some of these but uh some of these won't um uh would just be uh, super easy to implement in your life. And some of them are things you have to set up. It might take you two minutes or five minutes to set them up. But once they're they're set up, they just save you a ton of time and uh, really just streamline things in your life. So I hope this helps. Uh, I'm definitely a little bit of a geek, uh, a lot of bit of a geek. I get I take after my sister, Michelle, who uh, she'll kill me for saying calling her Michelle. She goes by Shell. Uh, so, sorry, Shell, if you're listening. You're probably listening because I probably told you about this episode. And she probably has a dozen other things. I probably should have asked her before I did this because she is a total hack at technology and tries to and, and just gets uh, a ton of cool things. So, I'm using hack in the positive sense there. So, she's really good at, uh, she always sends me cool things. Uh, did, Jim, did you know you could do this or you know you could do that? And uh, little little hacks for iPhone or um, or for, for otherwise. So, um, all right, without further ado, here goes, here are my top technology hacks and tips for getting more done and automating your goals. Here's maybe the biggest one and kind of coolest one. Uh, I think anyway, that I kind of took me a little bit of, uh, finagling over a couple of years, several years ago to, to really get this to work the way I want it to. And this is how I have it set up now for for setting my goals and, and then making sure I remember them and review them and actually follow through on them. Because the, what happens, a lot of people set goals, set New Year's resolutions, and then they kind of you know go through their, their year and they forget and um, they move on. And, and all of a sudden, they're like, wait a second, what are my goals again? So here's the technology that I use. So uh, I have a, you know, like, like most people I have an electronic calendar on my phone. On my, it's on my computer, on my Outlook. Um, and I have, a, I have a, a reminder set once a month where I, uh, it's just a recurring uh, Outlook event, uh, the first Monday of every month, and it pops up at like 7.30 a.m. And it just says, review your goals. And that when the, when the event pops up, uh, I just look in the description of that event that pops up on my calendar, and in the description is a hyperlink to a Google Doc. That Google Doc has my goals. It has the full goal-setting worksheet, goal-setting template for all my goals, relationships, self, health, and wealth. And if you want that template, just go to jimharshawjr.com slash action. You'll get the action plan from this episode. And Lika's going to, who helps me, I've mentioned her a couple times on this podcast, but all these, these, these tips and tactics I'm going to have, excuse me, in the action plan, as well as you also have, uh, you have, you'll be able to access whenever you, uh, whenever you subscribe, you'll be able to access the, uh, 
my my page that has all the templates, all everything, all kind of resources there. There's a there's a template for uh, a goal setting template, so you can have all this exact same system as well. So anyway, uh, I have about what do I have? Six goals this year. Um, so in the in the categories of relationships, self, health, and wealth, a total of six. Uh, two in relationships, one in self, uh, one in health, and two in wealth, and. You know, I recommend not no more than two per area, but at least one per area. So it'd be between four and eight. So anyway, anyway, every month I have to review my goals. I review my deadlines. I review my action items. I tweak things. I update things. I change. Sometimes I scrap a goal altogether. You know, if I just realize this isn't the right goal, I scrap it all together. So I hope that uh, gives you a little bit of uh, confidence and, and maybe freedom that you can actually set awesome goals. And then go, wait a second, maybe this isn't so right. These aren't these things aren't set in stone. I think that holds a lot of people back. So anyway, uh, recurring monthly event on my calendar. In that event, in the description is a hyperlink to a Google Doc. I can just that event automatically pops up. I just click on the link and boom, I go to I go over to the Google Doc. And by the way, I do use Google Docs for everything. I use Google Docs for just about everything. Um, because you can easily share. Google Docs, and it's just, they're basically the same as Word document, you know, um, or, or, or an Excel spreadsheet. You can easily share them. I mean, two people can edit the same document at once. Uh, they're searchable. Like if you have, you know, I have hundreds and hundreds of Google Docs, and I can search for a term or a keyword that's in one of the documents, and it'll easily find it if I can't remember the title. It's super awesome. Drag and drop to organize things into different folders, etc. I don't use Evernote. And I tried Evernote for a while. It just didn't work for me. Google Docs is my go-to instead of Evernote. But I know a lot of people like Evernote too. All right, moving on to the next one. Success hotline. I have the success hotline on speed dial on my phone. So whenever I'm driving to work, my phone's plugged in in my car. All I have to do is press the button on my steering wheel and say, Call success hotline and uh, success hotline gets called. So actually, you don't have to have it on speed dial on your sort of saved favorites to have it do that. Um, just have just save this phone number in your phone. It's the phone number is nine seven three seven four three forty six ninety. And again, we'll have that in the action plan. So jimharshawjr dot com slash action. You don't have to remember that or write it down right now. But it's nine seven three seven four three. 4690. That's Dr. Rob Gilbert, who I've had on the podcast before. Uh, we'll have the link to my episodes with uh, episode with Dr. Rob Gilbert in the action plan as well. He's done these messages, I think, every, every day since 1992. It's like almost 10,000 little short motivational messages, two, three, four minute message every single morning. Uh, every day, there's a new one. So um, anyway, that's part of my morning routine on my drive to work. Actually, the other thing that I'll do that I do on my morning drive to work is I, you know, on the part of the drive for about 10 minutes, at least I listen to the Bible, either pray or listen to the Bible. So on the days that I listen to the Bible, um, I've got the Bible app. It's just the U version, Y O U, U version.com. Uh, if you go to, you know, the app store or whatever app, uh, whatever phone you have, download the U version Bible. Um, you can listen to the entire audio version of the Bible, which is amazing. Um, when you're listening to it, make sure you listen to the new international version, not the King James version. It's just way too hard. It's just, uh, to listen to. So it's a, a more, um, contemporary, uh, uh, English whenever you listen to the new international NIV version. So I use that, uh, the Bible app. That's something else I do on my drive to work so that, uh, technology helps me do. Uh, so I'm, I'm driving, listening to the, uh, listening to the Bible. All right, another one is uh, while I'm doing my morning workout, uh, and I do my morning workouts now <clears throat> lately have been this. Uh, I do basically three sets of push ups, three sets of crunches or some type of abs, um, three sets of squats and or lunges, and then three sets of pull ups. So I do those just about every morning, and it's a great way to start my day. I you know, get a little bit of a workout in and uh, get a sweat going, get my heart rate up. I do things do them pretty quickly. I don't take a rest in between anything. So it's a, it's a pretty good workout. And then a few days a week, I'll add in a, a longer workout as well. But, um, but while I'm doing that workout, I listen to, there's a five minute news. NPR has a five minute, uh, uh, just a news update and it's updated every day. 
It's really awesome. Just sort of a, a way to get the top news stories of the day. I don't listen to a whole lot of news. There's a lot of negative news out there. Um, and I know some people may frown upon that, but, uh, and I do, I probably pay attention more than, more than I really even think so. But I, I don't, I try not to consume a whole lot of news. Um, a lot of it's just tabloid stuff. It's, you know, on the internet, it's clickbait, you know, it's, it's, you know, headlines are just trying to catch your uh, attention so they can drag you over to their website or onto their, their app so that you can, so they can get paid advertising. They need your eyeballs there and they need to keep your eyeballs there. And, um, and so they, they, uh, I think some of the news is, um, is just, uh, for that purpose only. Some of it's just not news and some of it's just tabloid stuff. So anyway, that's how I consume my news. It's a five minute NPR app. So again, we'll have a link to that app. It's just the NPR, uh, NPR now it is, is called, and it's a great way to just sort of, uh, get a five minute dose of the news. Um, the way I wake up in the morning is another use of technology. And I, been doing this for a few years now, at least a couple years now. Um, I used to hate, I wake up around five, between five and five 30 and everybody in the house is sleeping. And if I have my iPhone alarm, if I use that, then I'm certainly going to wake up, you know, whoever else is in the room, Allie, of course. And usually uh, one or one or two of my daughters, uh, climbs in with us. So, uh, the Fitbit has a way to just vibrate you know, you have your Fitbit on your wrist and it just vibrates and wakes you up, man. It definitely wakes you up. I had someone ask actually Russell Brunson, who I, I mentioned this on a podcast when I interviewed him a long time ago here on, uh, on my podcast, he was episode 50 or 49. I don't know. Maybe Lika can throw a link to the Russell Brunson episode in there. Amazing you know, entrepreneur and uh, amazing interview with him. But anyway, he's like, he's like, he wondered if that would actually wake him up. It absolutely, absolutely does. So it's totally silent vibrates on my wrist and and I wake up. I actually have two set, uh, one at 5.10 and one at 5.20. So usually I'm up by 5.10. Um, if I'm not, for some reason, I got to back up there at 5.20. So anyway, that's uh, that's how I wake up in the morning. Um, also on my phone, I use Kindle and iBooks. And some of these are not all that uh, all that huge breakthrough, but you will. I'm going to get to some pretty cool ones here, especially under productivity uh, in a couple of minutes. But um, so I Kindle and iBooks just to, to read books and consume books. Um, one thing, another one that I do is um, I use the voice memo app on my iPhone and I record uh, guided meditations for myself. There's plenty of guided meditations on YouTube, but kind of want you to go through those and realize they're all pretty generic um, and fine. Some of them are really good. Uh, I've created my own. I'm like, man, I want the best of the best. And so I just really wrote out a script of some self-guided meditation, uh, sort of the best of, sort of the different ones that I've listened to and created my own um, and really customized it to myself. Uh, also created a, a visualization one for myself, um, a wealth affirmations one for myself. So I have several different uh, voice memos just saved on my phone. There's a voice memo app on if you have an iPhone, um, if, you're, if you have an Android or otherwise, there's probably something similar and you can just record right into that. Um, so I have several different ones I use for mindset there that I'll listen to either during my drive to work. Um, that's part of uh, my morning routine on my drive to work also. So I listen to the Bible for the first half, do one of those for most of the second half. I'll call the success hotline and I'll say my mantra. Um, but I use that, uh, that memo, that voice memo for, for several of those. <clears throat> That's a, a fun one, a good one. Uh, another one, Jared Kamar, uh, who I've had as a guest on the podcast here as well a few episodes ago. Uh, I don't know, maybe five or so episodes ago. Jared recommended this to me a couple years ago when he was in Reveal Your Path in my program. Uh, he created, he used iMovie on his phone to uh, basically grab a bunch of, you know, like a vision board, create a vision board. You know, he grabbed a bunch of just images off the internet saved them to his phone, uploaded them to iMovie, uh, put some background music to it, you know, used some photos and pictures of his family um, and his goals and sort of created a movie uh, with music in the background that is just a, uh, like a motivational movie for his life and for his goals, which is pretty cool. So I have that one for myself as well. So every once in a while, about once a week or so, I watch this movie, right, on my phone 
that is uh, has pictures of me and my wife and my kids and you know my goals and our goals and all kinds of great things that I have and want in my life that I'm grateful for and things I want even more of, etc. It's all there in this movie. So really, really cool. Um, another one, date nights. So one of my goals is to do a date night every month with Allie. I know that doesn't sound like a lot. It's not a huge, impressive goal. But it said for years, we're going to do a date night a month. It never happened until I made it a written goal. And uh, we do at least one a month now, which has been pretty awesome. We uh, started uh, in 2017. I think we did 16 date nights. Um, But uh, again, not a huge goal, but man, it's just so important to make sure we actually get it done. But one of the things that, uh, you know, it's kind of always on your mind if you're going out for, for dinner is like, how much money have we spent this week? We got four kids. We're dropping money on soccer and piano and you name it, all kinds of sports and activities and gymnastics and horse riding and uh, piano lessons and guitar lessons and ukulele lessons and all these things, right? So um, we never want to be worried about date night money, right? And so we just automatically, uh, I think it's $100, gets transferred once a month into our date night account and it's just there. It's just a savings account. So we use online banking I set all these online banking things up. So uh, money goes into a vacation account every month. Money goes into a date night account every month. Even for like kids' activities, we have a, a, you know, at the beginning of every month, money just gets automatically transferred in there. So I don't even, we don't even have to think. It's not like, you know, these are things that are important to us, you know, vacations and date nights and activities for our kids. We don't want to have to like look at our bank account and like wonder if we can do it. So we just transfer that money out. It's into a separate savings account and it's there when we need it. So we don't even have to ever see it in our bank account because it never really uh, uh, doesn't spend much time there before it gets transferred out. So online banking, man, really leverage that for for putting money into the places where you uh, you really want to prioritize. All right, the next one, journaling. I use a Word doc for my journaling. So now I, I do a, a handwritten, I use the five-minute journal. I'm actually working on a Reveal Your Path journal that'll be available for you guys, uh, hopefully in a not-too-distant future here. I've got a lot of Great ideas, sort of ways to improve what I think is a great thing already with a five-minute journal, uh, written, handwritten. But I also, when I do my journaling uh, in terms of just getting clarity for my thoughts, I use a Word doc. Um, I password protect it. Uh, I probably don't need to. It's nothing really that personal on there. But um, but I do use a Word doc for that because you can password protect it uh, as opposed to a Google doc, which you can't password protect, at least not easily. Um, and I save that Word doc on Dropbox. So that's another technology that I use because I can access, access my Dropbox on my phone. I can access it on my computer, any computer that I'm on. Um, I can access that Word document and just pull it up and start pouring out my thoughts and just get clarity on whatever I need to get clarity on. Um, all right, another one. I use my iPhone for a lot of stuff. Uh, one of them, or it, well, one of them is the the four thirty p.m. rule. Uh, again, if you've downloaded anything or if you've gotten access to uh, all my resources, you'll see there's a, there's a, a resource called Eighteen Ways to Stay Focused, and one of them is called the four thirty p.m. rule. Four thirty p.m. I have an alarm that goes off on my phone, and that just prompts me to wrap up, start wrapping up my day and thinking about tomorrow and writing down sort of what are the things I want to get started on tomorrow. Um, I also have another alarm that goes off on my iPhone for on Sunday before we leave for church to get a healthy snack, you know, cause it's like they always have junk food after church, you know, muffins and candy and stuff like that. And I always try to grab, I don't know, banana, apple, something healthy for me and the kids and Allie to eat on the way home. Anyway, that helps a little bit, but uh, we always tend to eat some junk food there anyway. But um, uh, knowing that we have food in the car, a healthy snack helps to uh, walk away from some of that junk food. Uh, weekly meeting with Allie. Um, those I just have t- I have a billion alarms. I use that that alarm the alarms on my phone constantly. But um, anyway, those all help with my goals as well. Uh, and here's the final one for goals. I'm going to move into productivity. Uh, that is is the one I use here is um, what I was going to tell you is a screensaver. I have different used different screensavers on my phone. So I have uh, wallpaper, which is kind of behind the apps on my phone, but the screensaver is like the lock screen. Um, and I will put different goals, different um, things I want to work on. Um, if I see a great quote, actually right now what I have is uh, uh, a paragraph or so uh, from a book that I'm reading and I copied that and, and formatted that into uh, uh, something I can put on my lock screen. So every time I uh, pick up my phone, boom, I see that there, and it's just a reminder of what I'm trying to work on right now in my life. So those are all of my goal hacks to automate goals. I'm going to roll through a bunch of productivity ones that I think that you're going to like. Some of these are pretty sweet. So 
Um, let me start out with a pretty sweet one right here. All right, we're going to start out with some iPhone ones. This one's really cool. iPhone text shortcuts. And I'm sure there's, again, this is for iPhone users, but I'm sure there's something similar for Androids or any other devices. But if you go to, let's see, I think it's if you go to general, uh, and then, yeah, go to general, go to settings, then to general, then to keyboard, and then there's a text replacement. And basically, if I type in on my, I'm constantly typing in, you know, texting or emailing on my phone, I'm typing reveal your path, which is a long thing to type. I just type in RYP and boom, reveal your path pops up. If I have to type in my email address, Jim Harshaw, uh, uh, Jim at Jim Harshaw Jr.com, it's just J H J R, and boom, my whole email pops up. Somebody says, What's your email? Text me and says, What's your email? Uh, my website, J H com, J H C O M, my whole website pops up. I've got all these things set up. Uh, Go Who's, UVA fan, of course, uh, G H, boom, Go Who's shows up. So it's super. I've just got a bunch of them set up. Um, HB. So whenever I'm typing on Facebook, happy birthday to somebody, HB, comma, and uh, happy birthday shows up. So that's another good one if you're trying to uh, type in happy birthday to a bunch of people whenever you get the Facebook notifications. So that's a cool one. I love that one. It takes a couple minutes to set up. But if you find yourself typing something over and over and over and it's hard and it's, you know, you got to, um, you know, it, it takes, you know, 30 seconds or whatever, type it up, or I don't know, 10 seconds. I guess this doesn't save you all that much time, but it's just uh, really streamlines things. I love it, love it. Uh, another one, uh, take a picture and then email it as a PDF. Uh, I'll have Lika uh, Google that real quick because there's a bunch of little uh, ways you can Google that or find that online, but how to take a picture from your phone and then email it as a PDF. So if you have to email a PDF document to somebody and you're looking at the document and you're not near a copy machine or you can scan it or scan machine, you can just take a picture of it, and then uh, and then you can email that as a PDF to somebody, which is really great. Um, I do a lot of uh, taking a picture, and then um, I, I, of like cards, uh, not my credit cards necessarily, but different cards, um, like my health insurance card, or um, I can't even think of the cards that I have in there right now. But um, I'm gonna pull up. Uh, my album here with cards and oh i got like my ikea card i've got uh, my university of virginia id card uh, my security code for my vehicle card um my license plate which i don't remember i take a picture of all that stuff and i save it on my phone in an album so all that stuff is readily available so that's a good little time saver um Gmail. If you're a Gmail user, Yahoo may Yahoo may have something like this as well. Uh, but I know Gmail has this. Outlook has this. Uh, Gmail. It's called canned responses. So you can there's these add-ons for Gmail that um, that you can have if you find yourself typing the same thing again over and over, um, or you need the same information, you know, uh, for something, and you're constantly emailing it or looking it up and having to copy and paste it over. Use the Gmail canned responses or Outlook has something called uh, Quick Parts. And if you, just, again, just Google that. Maybe Lika can Google that and put that in the action plan, but that's Quick Parts for Outlook or canned responses for Gmail. Uh, super easy and to, to, to type in the same thing over and over if you find yourself re- repetitively typing something or, or finding, look, having to look something up to copy and paste it. Um, another one, uh, dictation. I just use dictation on my phone for everything, for dictating emails, um, dictating text messages. But don't be like Steve Garland, who, again, I've had Steve on the podcast. He was another guest, good friend of mine, head wrestling coach of Virginia. <laughs> you have to proofread these. Proofread these. Steve just dictates it and then sends it and then you get it and you're reading about like you're like what something happened in the 1800s and your grandma and what and none, none of it makes sense and uh it's because he doesn't uh he just he, he just dictates the dictation's not like 100 percent, and uh, and you get some email and you don't even know what he's talking about so um but uh sorry steve threw you under the bus there but uh you gotta you gotta you gotta proofread those things man um so dictation's awesome uh let's see Oh, another Gmail plugin I meant to mention is if you say in your email that you attach something and you go to press send and the attachment's not there, there's a, it'll pop up and say, you know, you said you had an attachment, 
Uh, it doesn't look like there's an attachment here. It'll just kind of remind you. That's kind of a nice saver. Oh, another one that I use for Gmail is whenever I click send, it doesn't actually send for five seconds because I'm the guy who always clicks send. I'm like, oh man, I, there's something else I want to do uh, to put in there. As soon as I click send, it's like my mind automatically thinks of something. You click send and there's like a five second delay. And if you think of something, you just click undo and then it uh, and then it pulls the email back and you can add, change, tweak, or whatever. So it's a, it's a really cool little uh, little feature there. You can uh, this is another like Gmail. I don't know what they call them plugins um, or add ons. I think it is. It's a really good one. Uh, next, another piece of technology that I use, Canva. Uh, Canva is a super, if, you, if you're if you like me and you just are artistically and graphically challenged, I have no eye for, for creating graphics. Uh, Canva will make you look like an expert. It's C-A-N-V-A dot com. And there's a web app you can or you can download the app on your uh, on your phone as well. So super easy to create awesome looking graphics, different shapes, sizes, etc. A bunch of awesome templates, etc. You can use. Um, all right, next one, Facebook Newsfeed Eliminator. Somebody told me about this. It's a Google Chrome plugin. I love Google Chrome, by the way, because uh, I can log into Google Chrome again from any computer, and all my uh, all of my uh, bookmarks and everything show up. But and if I add a bookmark on one computer, it shows up on my other computer. <clears throat> but um, Facebook Newsfeed Eliminator is a Google Chrome plugin. It's free, so whenever I go to Facebook, I don't see my newsfeed. Unfortunately, I do when I'm on my phone. I get sucked into it there. But on the on my computer, I just don't even. I log in. My my newsfeed is just gone. So when I log into Facebook, I need. I'm I'm going. I'm, I, I have to do it for a reason. I have to go to my Reveal Your Path group, or I'm going to my JimHarshaJr.com page. Um, or I'm going to look at something specific, but my newsfeed, which is just the addictive part that Facebook tries to, to suck you in and keep you there with, uh, I don't see it on my computer, which is awesome. Uh, now, another one, Hootsuite. I use Hootsuite for managing my social media for my business. So I've got through in Hootsuite, I can uh, I can post on Facebook, I can post on Twitter, I can post on Instagram, uh, LinkedIn, and I guess that's it. But I can also schedule stuff to be posted later there, which is really awesome. So I use, it's five ninety nine. it's free. Uh, I use the five ninety nine per month one. I can also upload uh, a bunch of stuff to be posted over the next, you know, 30 days, 60 days, whatever. So Hootsuite is a good tool for that. Uh, next for a to-do list, I use Asana, Asana, A-S-A-N-A. Super awesome, uh, just to-do list tool. <clears throat> I probably don't use 50% of the features. There's so many great features with it um, that come with it for free. You can certainly upgrade to the paid app. But there's one that's really cool that I haven't used. I'm trying to find an excuse to use it. But it's like um, you put your to-dos, maybe it's like a project, right? And you can have all your to-dos sort of listed in columns. And you can drag and drop them from one column to another column. Uh, kind of cool. Uh, I think it's like a card, or, uh, Asana card or something like that they call it. But it's kind of a cool thing that... I haven't found an excuse to use yet. So, all right, next, Pomodoro. Uh, the Pomodoro technique, uh, it's this sort of productivity technique where, you, you know, if you're having trouble focusing on any given day, trying to get focused to work on stuff, all you do is, this, this is the idea, it's an idea of like, you focus for 25 minutes, okay, no email, turn off your phone, no distractions, don't answer the phone, don't answer landline, cell phone, anything, not checking text messages, but 25 minutes are just locked in productivity. And after 25 minutes, you can take a five-minute break. You can check your phone. You can check your email. You can go to the restroom, whatever. But POMO, P-O-M-O-D-O-R-O. There's apps for your phone. There's If you just Google Pomodoro timer, you'll find someone on the internet, et cetera. So that's a great little, little technique as well. Uh, next one, conference calls. I use freeconferencecall.com. Freeconferencecall.com. It's awesome. I use it for all my mastermind calls. Uh, you can record. I don't know. It's all free. It's I don't know how they do it, but um, there's no ads or anything. And um, I imagine there's a paid version at some point, but uh, I haven't come across it. But you can record the calls if you want. You can then download and you know share that recording with anybody you want, etc. So freeconferencecall.com. All right. Another one I use, uh, Upwork, U-P-W-O-R-K. That is how I found Lika, who creates all the action plans from these episodes. And and she's listening right now as I'm talking about her. Uh, and Xenar, 
So Zenar does a lot of my website work, but I, I've hired the, found these guys, hired these guys, and I pay them through Upwork. All their time is logged and managed through Upwork. Um, and it's really just, it's cool. You know, I can see reports of all the work they've done. There's actually like screenshots that Upwork takes while they're working on my account stuff. So if I wanted to, I can go in and see what they're working on or how much time they spent on or what they were doing. So, um, so it's really an awesome, awesome tool. So there's people from all over the world on Upwork that do everything you can possibly imagine. If you find yourself doing something it's repetitive. You want to offload or outsource. There are awesome experts out there like Lika, like Xenar, who can help you. Um, these folks, they they work for me. I don't know, in not that much time every week. You know, Lika does my uh, my action plans. Has done some transcriptions of podcasts for me. Uh, Xenar, you know, depends on kind of what I'm working on with my website, but he does a lot of work for me on some weeks and not so much on others. Uh, next one, another thing that I use. To get stuff done inexpensively is Fiverr.com, F-I-V-E-R-R.com, F-I-V-E-R-R.com, Fiverr.com. Used to be everything was for five bucks. Now it's like you can get stuff done for five bucks or 10 bucks or 15 bucks or 25 bucks or whatever the case might be. But everything's really inexpensive. Um, the the intro that you heard from my podcast at the very beginning, um, the intro is done by a guy that I found on Fiverr. And he's a like a professional voiceover guy. It cost me, I think, 10 or $15 to have them do that, which is pretty awesome. All right, another technology, uh, WordPress. I put my, my websites on WordPress. There's all kinds of simple ways to create websites these days. WordPress is awesome because almost every developer in the world, certainly anybody you find on Upwork, uh, knows how to manage a WordPress website, knows how to change it, update it. You can Google WordPress template and you'll find tons, thousands of free WordPress templates online that you can use as your website. You just plug in your pictures, plug in your text, and you're ready to go. Um, and uh, so Upwork, or, I mean, WordPress is a great platform for creating your website. That's what I use. Last two, Nike Run uh, is the app that I use for working out, tracking my runs. I don't use it that much, but Nike Run is just another app that I use for productivity and actually just kind of tracking my my runs. And then last but not least, managing the incessant amount of photographs on your phone. I use Flickr. Flickr has an auto upload feature. I have like a terabyte, which is like, a I don't know, it can hold like a 5 billion pictures. Uh, probably not that many, but it can hold more pictures than I need it to hold. But anyway, it automatically uploads uh, pictures from my phone to Flickr whenever I turn uh, open up Flickr. Um, pretty awesome way to just sort of offload and, and uh, get those pictures off your phone. And then I can drag and drop and put them into folders and that sort of thing. So anyway, that is a ton of stuff. I hope you got a couple of good nuggets out of there. Certainly the automation of my goals is some of my favorite stuff because that's just the stuff that you have to be able to, you have to be able to put that together and, and make sure you're managing your goals and not just set your goals, but actually follow through on them. That's a big part of the follow through step that I work on uh, with people who take reveal your path. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed. I hope that helps. Hope you're not overwhelmed. Make sure you grab the action plan, jimharshadjr.com slash action. And until next time, take the time to get clear on your goals and embrace failure as a stepping stone on your path to success.